Welcome everybody to today's seminar. As you see, we continue in the same uh, line, uh, like in the previous one, uh, we speak again about quantum systems and uh, Hanas Demos uh, will uh, be talking about chaos and Bohmian quantum potential. So we start immediately since we are late. So hello to everyone. Uh, Today we are going to talk about house and Bohmian quantum potential. This is an ongoing uh, research uh, with Professor uh, George Kondopoulos. Um, and I will present you our very first results. Uh, excuse me. Can we change the... Yes, 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 yes. No, I can't change the, the, yes. the page. Yes, yes. Okay, so the outline of this uh, short talk is this one. We're going to talk about the Bohmian trajectories. Uh, a very quick review of the nodal point, X point complex mechanism. Uh, then an introduction, a very short introduction to quantum potential. And then our very first results in three cases of different wave functions of the 2D quantum harmonic oscillator. And maybe we can go on with some of our very first conclusions, okay. So, as you already know, Bohmian trajectories are uh, dictated by the wave function of the system. So in Bohmian mechanics, the quantum particles, uh, okay, can you close it? The quantum particles are guided by the wave function, which is a complex quantity, and their evolution is described by the so-called Bohmian equations of motion, uh, equation one, uh, where the denominator G uh, is crucial because when the denominator G uh, becomes uh, zero, okay, we have the so-called nodal points, the nodes of the wave function, the places in the configuration space where the wave function vanishes. And uh, in our center, we have a long tradition uh, studying the behavior of Bohmian trajectories very close in the very close neighborhood of the nodal points. Um, Professor Kondopoulos and uh, Christos Ethimioblos have already um, shown in the past that nodal points are uh, responsible for the generation of chaos in Bohmian trajectories. So uh, as we say here, uh, the nodes of the wave function Psi play a crucial role in Bohmian mechanics since, this, since they are always accompanied in general, by hyperbolic and stable points, the so-called X points, which scatter the incoming trajectories, and this the, the cumulative effect of uh, many such scattering events is the production of house. The nodal points, along with their uh, their friends, the X points, form a very distinctive uh, form of the Bohmian flow, which is called the nodal point X point X point complex. Okay. So here we have a typical uh, example of a nodal point X point complex. Uh, in the center, we see the node, the nodal point, and here we see the X point in the frame of reference of the moving nodal point. We have made a transition and transformation of our initial uh, Bohmian trajectories in the frame of reference of the moving nodal point. And the X point is defined as a stagnant point of the Bohmian flow in this frame of reference. So here we have uh, du over dt equal to dv over dt equal to zero. And the same happens here. So this is a stagnant point um, from the perspective of the node. Uh, you see that the incoming trajectories follow this or this or this, these arrows. Okay, so they are deflected. 
And here we have the so-called invariant curves of the, of the X point, which emanate from the X point. Some of them enter the region, in, uh, one of them uh, enters the region of the nodal point. And if the Bohmian trajectory um, uh, comes close and gets inside this region, it forms for some time uh, the so-called uh, Bohmian uh, vortices, uh, a spiral motion uh, with the center uh, around the nodal point, around the moving nodal point, up to a certain time where the nodal point acquires a large velocity and then um, uh, goes uh, very quickly to infinity. Um, so this is the typical behavior close to a nodal point X point complex. This is a nodal point X point complex. Okay. So the quantum potential, the quantum potential lies at the heart of the Bohmian, of Bohmian quantum mechanics. And is, it was introduced by David Bohm um, by writing, uh, the, um, by making the polar decomposition of, of um, the wave function Psi. So uh, if we make the polar decomposition, if we use the uh, Euler method, um, or the Euler formula for this uh, wave function, okay, uh, and insert this equation in the usual Schrodinger equation, then we have to separate the real from the imaginary part. And then we find two distinctive, uh, two distinct equations, this one and this one. And you see it here that this uh, is nothing more than a modified quantum uh, Hamilton Jacobi equation. If we treat this term as a quantum potential, as a potential, which is not produced or, or it is not introduced by any external source, okay, but only from the mathematical um, uh, handling of the uh, wave function. And this one is nothing more than a continuity equation for the probability density uh, size squared. So quantum potential in this equation, okay, is defined as uh, as in equation six. Thus equation four can be seen as a modified hamilton jacobi equation, while equation five is a continuity equation for the probability density R squared and the velocity field uh, written in this formula. Thus, according to Bohm, the quantum particles evolve, evolve, not evolve, in the presence, in the presence of a generalized force uh, minus nabla, V plus Q. So we have the usual um, potential, which is externally controllable, and it is the, content, the potential which um, uh, we find inside the Schrodinger equation. And this new kind of potential, which um, stems from the form of the wave function and nothing more. Uh, Sure. Just a quick question. Uh, are you focusing only on the on the real part of the equation there because you split into uh, real and imaginary parts? Yes. Are you the, the, on the real one? The, 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 uh, yes. We we want to introduce the quantum potential. Here we have the probability density, uh, which is um, uh, modulus of psi squared. Uh, okay, but the quantum potential comes only from the real part of the equation of the, um, okay. of the Schrodinger equation. Is there any physical meaning in the imaginary part? Uh, yes, from the, from the imaginary part, you have the continuity equation. Okay. So you, have, uh, you separate part. the variables and then you have a system of two equations okay. coexisting. Okay. Uh, sorry. Okay. Now, the quantum potential has some strange properties according to David Bohm and Basil Hilley. Uh, who was who, who were the father of uh, this theory, the fathers of this theory. Quantum potential is not derived by, by any external source, but only from the wave function under polar decomposition. Thus, it is related to a basic underlying field. Okay, so this is something new and, and this is an exotic feature. It contains information about the complete experimental arrangement in which the particle finds itself. Okay, and it is invariant under multiplication of, of R, 
of the magnitude with a constant, since uh, we can find it both in the, the numerator and the denominator of the definition of quantum potential. Thus, it does not vanish in regions outside the support of the wave function. So the, may, the wave function may become practically zero in a, uh, in a, um, a large, uh, uh, far away from its support. So the support is the region of the configuration space where psi squared is not negligible. So we have a, a remarkable um, probability of finding the particle there. Okay, but quantum potential uh, covers all the universe. Okay, so and finally, the one of very important characteristics of quantum potential: the quantum potential tends to minus infinity as r uh, tends to zero, where we have the nodal points. This is not. This is not something new okay it can be proven uh, analytically and we have from this the from our final comment here uh, i had a new question what is the behavior of the quantum potential in the close neighborhood of the nodal points where house is generated where is the x point okay the x point was born here in our center Okay, so the nodal point is uh, well understood. Where is the X point and where and what is the relation between the X point and the quantum potential? Okay. Uh, we will try, we are trying, this is an ongoing process. We are trying to understand what happens since we are working in this field since November, I think, or, or October. Okay, and we are work with the usual workhorse of quantum mechanics, the harmonic oscillator. We have a 2D quantum harmonic oscillator, non-interaction terms, nothing, no perturbations, the most simple two-dimensional quantum system, but very important from a Bohmian perspective. So we work with three different wave functions. I have not written here the formulas because they are too big and uh, they are uh, not useful at all for our uh, discussion. So we work with three different wave functions describing, describing a 2D harmonic oscillator with irrational frequencies. The irrational frequencies is as a prerequisite in order to observe halves. Okay, if there is a rational, if the frequencies are commensurable, then we have periodic trajectories. Okay, these three wave functions cover the case of a single nodal point of infinitely many nodal points uh, along straight lines this was the case of the qubits that have, uh, I have shown you in the past, and of a finite number of nodal points with no certain geometry in the configuration space. This is the last one, is the most difficult, uh, and this is the most general case that we may um, find. So, okay, some now from now on, there are only figures. We see here the case of a wave function with only one single, with a single nodal point. Okay, and I have drawn here the um, invariant curves of the X point corresponding to this nodal point at T equals 1.27. This is not uh, uh, this is not useful for our conversation, for our discussion. But I have to say that in this case, the velocity of the nodal point of the moving nodal point which is crucial, is found to be crucial for our discussion, is slow, is not small, is, is not large. We have a slowly moving nodal point. Okay, so we have the, this typical uh, figure. If we plot the quantum potential and put these trajectories, the invariant curves of the nodal, of the X point at T um, 1.27, and we plot them on the surface of the quantum potential, we see this quantum well, okay, which goes straight to infinity. If we turn, if we turn uh, this uh, figure and we see it from above, then we will see that at minus infinity is the nodal point, okay. So the quantum potential, which is, which is the dominating uh, player around the, in the close neighborhood of the nodal point, okay, has this behavior. And here you see, here you see the X point. Here there are some letters for the 
first spirals around the nodal point as it as the trajectory the invariant curve goes down and comes up again okay this was our very first uh, figure here we make a zoom here we have plotted uh, q up to minus 400 but here we have plotted q which is red with blue we have um, the classical uh, potential of the harmonic oscillator okay and with yellow we have their sum the total potential and we see that in the very close to the nodal point which is here it's not uh, we cannot see it, but it goes down this well we have a peak we see we observe a peak a local maximum which from a under rotation seems like this one okay we have two views of the same figure okay and the x point is very very close is found to be very very close to this uh local maximum so this was a very uh new result okay so the basic question is if everything comes stems emanates from the wave function does the wave function fill the x point the nodal point is the place where it vanishes what about the x point can we find the x point without solving the defining system of vanishing velocities does the x the, does the, the the wave function um behaves that behave um remarkably at the x point okay and we found that in this region, very close to this peak, uh, we have the X point. Now, then we started uh, cases a little time later, only about 0 0.4 units, okay? But here, the nodal point, the nodal point is very fast, acquires a large velocity as it uh, goes out from the configuration space uh, heading to infinity and we see that uh, the dimension of the nodal point x point complex now is uh, much smaller than the previous one you see that the distance between the x point no no i i don't look at infinity the nodal point why does the nodal point goes to it always uh, the, the the typical behavior of the nodal points are um they are defined by the two equations of uh psi imaginary equal psi real equal zero so uh, in all of the cases that we have studied so far the nodal points are always moving for a certain time period inside the configuration space where we have the support of the wave function and then they uh suddenly because they have dominators the, the, the dominators um depending on time and these dominators become zero at certain times so they they go they accelerate and go out uh, from the they escape the configuration space very very quickly and they enter from another region again instantaneously the motion and this potential well with the two harmonics no, no, not the motion. I, 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 I'm talking about the motion of the nodal points, not of the physical trajectories. What are you and you the Here, what is the, what is n? You and you, the you, you and v are the coordinates x minus x nodal. Okay, so these are positions of motion. Motion yes. takes place here. Yes, but this is a frozen system. Okay, this is a frozen system at t equal one point six. And we try to see the very close region of the moving nodal point. This nodal point, this nodal point, is moving uh, with large velocity. Okay. If you decode the inertial coordinate system, it moves to the But here, but here it's frozen. We are we are coordinate system centered at the nodal point. We are riding the nodal point. And the wave function of the harmonic oscillator goes all the way to infinity. It's not the the wave function. Yes, yes. The wave function. Yes. Yes. 
The wave function? Yes, of course. Yes, the wave function, but the, the sub, yes. And the quantum potential is not zero. Yes. Yes. So just one quick question. I understand that the uh, coordinate system is frozen, is, is riding the node of point. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the course of time, does a shape, namely the distance between the x point and the nodal point, becomes, uh, stays constant? No, it does not. Is this is a crucial point. Yeah. So what the, the, the distance, the, 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 the nodal point explode complex is breathing, okay, changes, uh, rotates, uh, has um, uh, bi uh, bifurcations, and changes the distance between the X point and the nodal point. Um, Professor and Christos showed back in 2009 that the velocity of the nodal point is inversely proportional to the distance between the nodal point and the X point. Right. So right. the whole thing is stretching. Yeah. Sometimes it stretches and sometimes it, it gets squeezed. So it's not a conservative topology here. No, 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 no. no not is there dissipation because of that? This, uh, this is a tough question. The quantum answer is that we are looking on a Schrodinger's equation. So we don't have um, environmental. Uh, the environment uh, dissipation to environment or, or we don't have an external pump we don't get energy we don't lose energy so we think that the, uh, the evolution of the uh, quantum systems inside the Schrodinger equation is that you have this system and nothing more okay so we, this is a toy it's a, it's a very simple system okay now we, where we have that we have a fast moving nodal point, the quantum potential acquires this form. And now we have, and the red dot uh, resembles the X point, which uh, is again on the top of a local maximum. So near, very near. And as the velocity becomes larger and, lar and larger, and the the nodal point x point complex it gets uh, squeezed the x point it is actually uh, at the same point of the maximum of the quantum potential okay so different topology here according to this form and x point and nodal velocity here we have an approximative figure calculation in three different times time uh, t 1.27 slow moving nodal point time uh, t equal i think 1.6 faster moving nodal point and the x point is actually very very close to the top okay of q and here we have time t equal 1.75 where the uh, nodal point acquires extremely large velocity at 1.84 it goes out it escapes the configuration space it is actually uh, very very far from the center okay and the x point here is exactly there at the top now we found this remarkable first uh, uh, result and then we moved on we are with our previous previously worked example of uh, Bohmian qubits that I've shown you in the last uh, seminar, in the previous seminar. Here we have infinitely many nodal points, but all of them are confined on straight lines. Okay. I found again the X points of every nodal point and draw again the surface of the quantum potential and I and with a very good accuracy uh, the X points were found to be again at the top of the local maximum quantum potential okay so uh, we thought that this is not uh, this uh, this cannot come out of the blue it has to be something important about the topology of quantum potential around the nodal points and then we moved on with random wave functions of the harmonic oscillator where we have no certain geometry. This is the example that we are still working on. It's very difficult. The 
the absence of an of a strict topology of a strict geometry about the nodal for the nodal points makes this problem uh, practically very very tough to deal with uh, and but again uh, the, uh, we draw the quantum potential in a in a wave function and constituted by three parts or three solutions of the quantum harmonic oscillator with not infinitely many but with finite number of nodal points and we plot uh, we plotted some of the exponents and again they were found to be very close to uh, the tops okay the, these needles now uh, our very very latest um, examples results if we see this topology from above and we plot the vector field the bohmian vector field okay uh, so we have plotted the vector velocities this is a uh, velocity field okay we found i found by hand because it is very difficult for the computer to solve the numerical the equations of uh, defining the nodal points in this case okay and i found that there are 27 nodal points maybe this is a very very uh, difficult example okay but these nodal points uh, i don't think that the uh, the analysis here is very good we we see we uh, we find the nodal points whenever the, there is a spiral motion of the Bohmian velocities of the arrows, okay? So when I found them and I saw them with my eye, then I went uh, to the computer and with a very, very accurate guess, the computer was able to find those uh, positions with a great accuracy, okay? And now in these days with Professor Kondoblos, we are trying to understand the trajectories of the nodal points in time. Here, we cannot solve the, the, the equations of the nodal points and find analytically their uh, equations, uh, their, their positions in time. We have, everything has to be found numerically, and this is not. Yeah. Nodal points where r equals to zero, where the wave function becomes zero. Not? The position of the nodal point is where the wave function becomes zero. Yes. You have that from the equation. You have the solution. You know where r is zero. Why do you need to follow the motions and the, the logic? Because it, is, it, it was. It, I I found it extremely difficult to solve it. When you have twenty seven nodal points, just in this case, and you try it with you maybe or Mathematica to solve the equations. Okay, you. I'm sure that you will never find all the number of the equations. You have to guess. Okay, you have to to put initial guesses. Where are you going to put the initial basis with uh, having no information about function is a polynomial in this case of high degree x and y of high order? Yes, and then in order to find the solutions, we have to do new numerical uh, estimates, otherwise, uh, there are no analytical That's formulas. True. There are no analytical formulas, they are analytical for one degree for uh, polynomials of uh, first degree, second degree, third degree, but not for high order. In the, how do you know the only 27, not 270, for example? I mean, if you... It, why? I, I, I'm focusing on the central region where the support of the wave function is uh, remarkable. It's not very, uh, very, not very small. We have to focus somewhere and most of the particles according to quantum mechanics, are going to be found, have a greater probability of being found in this region. Your question is very difficult because these nodal points move in time. And if you sketch them, make again this plot in, a, uh, in other time, without knowing anything about this one, you may, you may find less or more nodal points. This is not trick because some of them are maybe uh, they are maybe here, and uh, again during the numerical uh, solution you have to put some guesses. Otherwise, maybe or Mathematica finds only three or four of them, and you have to to make an initial guess very accurate. And there is no other way of finding without looking at the other figures. Yeah. Can I ask another question? Yeah. 
it seems strange to me that the wave function becomes both zero at point position. Uh, from our experience, for example, from current sheets in computer hydrodynamics, is it possible that the wave function may become zero along the lines? No, it is, it is not impossible. It is not impossible. It is not, it is not impossible. It is not impossible. Uh, actually, if I, if I understand correct, um, in three dimensions, we have these uh, solutions, something like this, uh, extrapolated in the third dimension. So we have nodal lines. Okay. So in the in the no, yes, that's why the nodal point exponent complex mechanism was named the three D nodal point exponent mechanism. Okay. So we have nodal structures and x lines. Okay. So uh, you see these two nodal points here. Okay. And now uh, with Professor Kondoblos, we are trying to understand the local topology uh, in the UV frame of this nodal uh, nodal point or this nodal point okay no. sorry, sorry 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 okay so we are trying to understand the topology uh, around this nodal point or around around this nodal point it is not always the same because these nodal points have relative velocities between them okay so if you center this nodal point and find, uh, try to find the X points, you will not find exactly the same X points as by centering uh, the UV frame around this nodal point. This is very confusing uh, characteristic that we are trying to, to understand, to comprehend. So another uh, way of studying the quantum potential, as I'm trying always to find the local maxima and the local minima, I have to note here that drawing the quantum potential around the node is very, very difficult for the computer. So my main concern uh, back in uh, October and November was uh, uh, to cancel out any possible errors. We had to work with 60 uh, significant digits because you have a very, very steep um, behavior downwards uh, at the expo at the nodal point going to infinity and immediately instantaneously very very close to it a peak a peak and the positive values so if it was uh, it was if it was um, an artificial uh, error I had to cancel out that but it is not actually professor made uh, an approximative um, calculation of the quantum potential by expanding it around the nodal point and we showed analytically that this behavior is correct and we have uh, not made any uh, mistakes very serious mistakes okay so here we have contour plots with python i don't know if it is going to be very useful but again i'm trying to to understand the local topology, we are always in the same figure, okay? Uh, and with this color bar, um, we have the layers of the contours, okay? So here, somewhere here, and here, and here, we have the nodal points that, that go uh, down to minus infinity, and we are trying to understand it, okay? Excuse me. That's the time. Yes, we have a harmonic oscillators with irrational frequencies. Yeah, but there is a characteristic period, perhaps period of time. Uh, I don't have an exact question. I don't have a. Uh, okay. What time? What time? time, 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 time. Ah, okay. Uh, what is this time about the system? Let's say explicit in. Point yes, of the so I have, uh, I don't have uh, an answer. Actually, we work with two frequencies where omega one, omega he is equal to one and the omega psi is equal to uh, uh, SQ, SQRT. It is a unit of the one. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, SQRT over two, SQRT two, yes. Yes, 
Yes, we have a good question. Some of our conclusions, if we have any conclusion yet, the X points are always, are always, we'll see, close to a local maximum of the quantum potential, okay? But not always at the maximum. The velocity of the nodal point plays a crucial role, okay? The distance between the X points and the local Q max decreases with the increase of the nodal velocity, okay? So the case of scattered nodal points needs to be further studied in order to understand house generation in realistic systems. In realistic systems, we are not, I think it is impossible to have certain geometry of the nodal points. Everything is going to be mixed up, okay? And mixed up in time, because here the, the Bohmian system, the Bohmian differential system, its main problem for, for me and, and for all of those guys who are trying to make the simulation is that it is not autonomous. Everything changes with time, okay. And my uh, main question, I cannot under, answer it yet. I hope that I will find uh, something to say in the future with a professor. The wave function vanishes at the nodal points, okay. What about the X points? Can we find the X point in the, in the wave function? So some of our papers. Now, there are two works uh, with professor that are under review. The first one was house in 2D Bohmian trajectories, which is uh, under review in uh, Maple transactions, because all of these uh, figures, most of them are worked uh, with Maple and we have the Maple conference 2021. And another one uh, where we made um, mathematical calculations, okay? Uh, House and Bohmian quantum potential, which is submitted and under review in Journal of Physics A. So thank you for your time. Now it's time for questions. First from the audience here. If somebody wants to ask something, just go ahead. Can you show the first figure, please? The first figure. The first figure. That that one. You see here the velocity field, the arrows like that, and you see that if the particles go in this direction, they approach the X point they are deflected either to the left or to the right. And therefore their distance, if the initial distance is small, then it becomes exponentially large. And that is chaos. That is how chaos is introduced. Then the question is, what are the orbits? The orbits, if you have an orbit that uh, we, do you have any example of an orbit? Uh, part? Not here. Not, not here. here. Not here. Well, the orbits may go around here for a few turns and then go out. And uh, this, they never stick to the nodal point. The nodal point accelerates. accelerates the particles go around for some time, but then the nodal point goes very fast away and the particles deviate from this in this coordinate system that has the center at the nodal point. The particles go away. In fact, the nodal point goes away <laughs> in to the very large distances. So this is how chaos is introduced and we want to see the details because after all, the importance of the chaotic orbits is very, very large because we have the Born rule. When we have chaotic orbits, the, you have a mixing of the various particles and in the end we have if we start a configuration with uh, 
the potential the probability, density. probability density is not psi square, which is Born's rule. If it is not, then if we have chaos, in the end, we end up with the Born rule. That is how Born rule is generated, and this is important. So, yeah. uh, maybe it's a quick. Uh, I don't see how particles enter this uh, cyclonic motion. Of the, I don't see where they enter from. Maybe you can explain. But my question is the second question is even if we associate real particles with these Bohmian trajectories, and if with each particle we associate some kind of De Broglie wavelength, some extent to that particle which is inversely proportional that extent to the velocity of the particle. I was wondering what is the size? I would guess that the size of the particles of the size of that region there. And, and my question is, if you were to convolve hmm? these plots, these nice detailed plots with points where the wave function is zero and the potential is minus infinity, if you were to convolve them with some Gaussian which has an extent, all this will be smeared out. I don't know if chaos survives if the particles are thicker than points. So my first question is oh, how okay. they enter that region. The second, if you smear everything out, then you may lose my question. You may lose this topology there. Actually, or, or not. I, actually, I don't think that in the Bohmian. They, they, they enter the, the answer is only the particles that are inside here. Mm -hmm. Only these particles go around. Because the other particles, as you see, they go like that, but not very close to the nodal point. Those that enter here make these spirals and approach the nodal point. That's a finite number or a zero number? Zero number? Or zero finite number, finite. not zero. So that region has some extent, two lines between them, they have some you, Excuse me, sir, sir. You have the, the blue curves are the uh stable invariant curves so they reach the x point at negative times um, and uh, the red ones are the unstable which go out from uh which deviate from the x point so between the two blue between the two blue there is a small tunnel there is a tunnel, there is a tunnel. Uh, i have to note this uh this point this plot is in a frozen frame of reference, okay, of physical time, in a time is fixed at 1.27, okay. And then we say that if we assume that if the local topology around another point does not change very fast, then we can uh, drop some trajectories, some initial conditions in this frozen uh, system and try to emulate what the real trajectories are going to do. And this was called the adiabatic, adiabatic approximation. Okay, since, the, the, since the, um, the real system follows the non-autonomous non uh, differential equations, it is only just an approximation. Yeah, okay, and, and especially in the case of the fastly moving uh, nodal points. Okay, it's an approximation. If, if the particles are extended, does this... What is the extent? Like yeah. In the sense that it's not a point; it's a more of a distribution of each part. I think. I think. I think that then maybe maybe you are going to lose many you of lose the the many many of yes many of these effects because then I think I think I imagine that all of these are going to be a little bit blurred. And this channel is not to be defined accurately. Something. I don't know. I don't know. I, they are, the, the streamlines are going to be um, reshaped. Okay. Something else? Let's see if there is someone else who wants to. So, Anathis, uh, you said that the nodal point is moving mm -hmm. and the particles, however, will escape. Mm -hmm. But, however, I thought that they, they can they cross the blue line. How can they escape? They, they escape they yeah, yes. They can cross the blue line because they are moving in real time. Mm -hmm. If here you have an, it's a frozen in time, it, it is frozen in time, and here you have by by freezing the time you may 
you made the you made the, the system autonomous. So you're trying to, to, to try, you are trying to understand. So you are trying to understand to emulate a non-autonomous system with several autonomous systems up to very small um, time periods. So this in a, an autonomous system you can never have crossings, crossing effects. Okay. But it's, it is just an approximation. There are time instances. Okay. So I see there are no more questions. Then thank you again. We will talk about the seminar of next week, which will be on Thursday, and you will be receiving the announcement. Okay. Thank you.